Hello, and welcome to my YouTube. This YouTube is Remembering 1965. I'm going to take you back in time, and we will look at that year, and I'll tell you what life was like. I was a 21-year-old sailor teaching advanced mathematics at the U.S. Navy Nuclear Power School located at the Knowles Atomic Power Lab in Saratoga Springs, New York, which is upstate New York. At the end of the year, I was transferred to the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier USS Enterprise, conducting combat operations in Vietnam. I served as a chief nuclear reactor officer for four years on the USS Enterprise and made four combat cruises to Vietnam. A combat cruise was anywhere from six to eight months in duration. The USS Enterprise was the world's largest, most powerful warship at that time. It was 1,200 feet long, 250 feet wide. You could put four football fields on our flight deck. The island was 28 stories tall. We carried 96 aircraft. We had a crew of 5,800 sailors. That was more men than my hometown. And although our top speed was classified, we could do well in excess of 35 miles an hour. We sat down once, all of us nukes, and figured out how many water skiers could we pull. We calculated we could pull about 28,000 water skiers. Lyndon B. Johnson was President of the United States in 1965. President Johnson signs the law which established Medicare and Medicaid. Go, go boots. These came out in 1965 and they were a big hit amongst the girls for about a year. Nancy Sinatra had a hit song called These Boots Are Made For Walking." Mass in the Catholic Church worldwide is finally said in the local languages rather than Latin for the very first time, and this happened in 1965. Bloody Sunday. Some 200 Alabama state troopers attack 525 civil rights demonstrators in Selma, Alabama, as they attempt to march to the state capitol. This was the beginning of the civil rights movement in America. A bloody beginning. U.S. troops occupied the Dominican Republic. President Johnson increases the number of United States troops in Vietnam from 75,000 to 125,000. And eventually it would get up to over 200,000 troops in Vietnam. Pope Paul VI visits the United States. This was historic because this was the very first time any pope had ever visited the United States. The Beatles performed at Shea Stadium in New York City on August 15th. This was the very first rock concert ever held in a stadium. And it was only the huge stadiums that could hold all the people that wanted to attend. Who was born in 1965? Robert Downey Jr., the, the actor. Charlie Sheen, the actor. Brooke Shields, the actress. Chris Rock, the comedian. And Ben Schiller, the comedian actor. What bands were first formed in 1965? Pink Floyd. The Doors. The Mamas and the Papas. The Grateful Dead.
the Jackson 5. And this is Michael, right in the middle. The musical Man of La Mancha opens in a very small, out-of-the-way theater in Greenwich Village in New York City. Of course, this would go on to become one of the most beloved and most popular of all Broadway musicals. I've seen it in the theater three times myself. The Vietnam War protest movement really got started in 1965. This is a shot of the November 27th protest. 12,000 people showed up at the Washington Monument and then marched on the White House to protest the Vietnam War. On TV, we saw a Charlie Brown Christmas for the very first time in 1965. Still enjoy these. Bounty paper towels were introduced in 65. The cordless phone was introduced. Now, this part had a, a, a cord, but you could pick this up and walk all around the house with it. The New York Jets signed a quarterback by the name of uh, Joe Namath. Now, Four years later, Joe would uh, become infamous because uh, Loudmouth Joe started predicting that they were going to win the Super Bowl, Super Bowl three, And, of course, everybody ridiculed him for that. Lo and behold, they won the Super Bowl. His prediction turned out to be true. Peter Jennings becomes the evening news anchor on ABC News. Many years later, I was sent to New York City for a training course, a one-day course uh, by my employer, Apple Computer. There were three people in that course, and Peter Jennings was one of them. So I got to meet him and spend the day with him. The Poppin' Fresh Pillsbury Doughboy was introduced in 1965. Sonny and Cher make their first TV appearance on Dick Clark's American Bandstand. Bob Dylan is booed for playing an electric guitar during a concert in Queens in New York City. People were just up in arms. They thought, oh, this is sacrilege. This is uh, folk singers can't play electric guitars. What's he thinking about? Big controversy. Four young men answer a small ad in the Hollywood Reporter. This is a newspaper. And they become the first manufactured boy band called the Monkees. So this wasn't a real uh, group. They were put together by this producer who just simply put an ad in saying, Hey, uh, if you can sing, uh, we want to talk to you. There was a British singer by the name of Davy Jones, and he changes his name to uh, David Bowie. And that happened in 1965. The Internet was launched. Now, it wasn't much of a launch. There were only two computers that talked to each other over a cable. But the birth of the Internet was 1965. SpaghettiOs is introduced by Campbell's. The Mariner 4 sends back the first close up pictures of Mars. This made headline news. We'd never seen another planet up close. The average salary for a man was $6,900 back then. A new home would cost you about $21,000 for a modest little, in this case, two-bedroom house. A 65 Ford Mustang would cost you $2,400.
What were the top grossing movies of 1965? Which ones made the most money? And here they are. Number one, The Sound of Music. And it also won the Academy Award for Best Picture that year. Number two, Dr. Zhivago. Big movie. Number three, Thunderball. James Bond, one of the most popular of all the James Bond movies. Certainly the, one of the biggest money makers. Number four, those magnificent men and their flying machines came in number four. And number five, that darn cat by Walt Disney, the Siamese cat. I grew up with a Siamese cat. From the age of eight until I graduated from high school, my family always had a Siamese cat. And as an adult for about 20 years, I had a Siamese cat. Ed White becomes the first American to conduct a spacewalk. Big news. Now, I put this in here because this happened in 1965. I put it in here because I think these people sitting here in the stands watching this high school football game have to be some of the best football fans in the world. And let me tell you why. Let me show you the rest of the picture. Ready? <laughs> Look, their school is on fire. See the fire hoses? But the game is going on. And the fans are watching the game. They're paying no attention to the fact that their school, Mount Vernon High School in Massachusetts, their school is burning down and they don't care because their high school football team is on the field. Now, my friends, those are real football fans. Don't you know? In Vietnam, they started spraying Agent Orange to kill all of the foliage so that the Viet Cong couldn't hide in the jungles. Unfortunately, Agent Orange was a deadly poison, and uh, it injured thousands of American soldiers. The Great Northeast Blackout happened on November 9th of that year, and nearly 30 million people in the Northeast were left without power for 13 hours. This is New York City. And one or two buildings had generators, but the rest of the city was totally black. Thousands of people were trapped in their elevators. Uh, the only lights were the cars on the streets. Now, I was located in a nuclear power school in Saratoga Springs. Here's a map of what it looked like from space, and you see this is the blacked out area, 30 million people. It also went up into Canada as well. I was located somewhere right about here in Saratoga Springs, New York. Now let me tell you what happened that night. I was getting off around 8 o'clock in the evening, and this little airport, the Saratoga Springs Airport, was located halfway between the Navy base and my apartment in Saratoga Springs. So as I'm driving along in the total dark, there are no lights anywhere, I see flashing lights up ahead, and it's a policeman. And what he asks us to do is to drive off the road, to drive onto the grass of this little airport, and we parked our cars along the runway with our lights shining out onto the runway because there was a little plane in the air that couldn't land because there were no landing lights. So the policemen had, there were about a dozen of us. We lined up here. We lit the runway with our car lights. The little plane came and landed safely and taxied away. Then the policeman came and said, okay, everybody, thank you. You can go home now. So that was a vivid memory of the great blackout of 65, helping a little plane land. The St. Louis Arch was finished in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, this happened, I think, around in March. And uh, it was so cold that day that the 
arch had actually contracted and the final piece here wouldn't fit. <laughs> so they ended up getting fire hoses and they sprayed water on the arch to get it to expand and, and open up enough for, so they could drop in the final piece. It took them hours to get that final piece in. Uh, I point this out because St. Louis was my home for 27 years. Um, this was my home in the woods in the western suburbs of St. Louis in the city of Wildwood. The TV telephone was invented in 1965. I don't think I ever saw one, but they invented it. So what were we watching on TV? What were the top five TV shows of 1965? Number one, Bonanza, the Western. Popular for years. Number two, Gomer Pyle, United States Marine Corps comedy. Number three, The Lucy Show. Now these were uh, skits, not the I Love Lucy. That was a different show. Number four, The Red Skeleton Hour, comedy variety. And number five, Batman. This show premiered, The Dating Game, and for you youngsters that never saw it, this is the way it works. There was a, a woman or a man, and they were going to interview three other contestants. Now, they can't see them. They don't know what these men looks like. But what she could do is she could ask any of them any questions she wanted to. So she would say, uh, number one, uh, yada, 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 number two. And based upon their answers, she got to decide who she wanted to date. That was the dating game. The Dean Martin Variety Show premiered in 1965. I Dream of Jeannie premiered in 1965. The Smothers Brothers show premiered in 1965. And this one was always in trouble with the censors. They skated on the edge. The Merv Griffin show premiered in 1965. And Merv Griffin himself would go on to produce some of the most popular shows in television history. Hogan's Heroes premiered. If you didn't get to see it, it was a story about these American soldiers that are prisoners of war in a German prisoner camp. And uh, one of the main characters was Sergeant Schultz. Now, these Americans are getting away with all kinds of mischief, and Schultz knows about it, but pretends that he doesn't. His famous line was, I know nothing, I see nothing. And uh, this was Colonel Clink. Funny show. Days of Our Lives soap opera premiered in 1965. A gallon of gas would set you back 29 cents. Who were the top singers of 1965? Number one, the Beatles. They finally went to the top of the charts. Number two, Herman's Hermits. Number three, the Rolling Stones. You see a pattern here? Yeah, first of all, they're all British, and second of all, they're all acts. They're, they're not solo singers. The bands dominated. Number four, the Supremes. Once again, a group. But finally, number five, Roger Miller, a solo act. King of the Road. That was his huge hit that put him there. So what were the top songs based upon Billboard magazine? They, they looked at how many songs were bought, records, and how many songs were played on the radio. Number one, Wooly Bully, Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. I'll be playing this in just a moment. Number two, I Can't Help Myself by the Four Tops. 
Number three, I can't get no satisfaction, the Rolling Stones. I was, uh, I was stationed at uh, the Bainbridge Naval Station in uh, Bainbridge, Maryland. It was the home of the boot camp for women in the Navy called Waves. And uh, I remember the girls in, in this boot camp marching along. And as these girls marched along, they were singing, I can't get no satisfaction. We thought it was really, really funny that all these, you know, 600 girls in the Navy boot camp not getting any satisfaction. Number four, you were on my mind by the We Five. And number five, you've lost that love and feeling by the Righteous Brothers. Went on to be a really popular group. And now I'd like to play some of my favorite songs from 1965. Enjoy. And now I'd like to play some of my favorite songs from 1965. Senses have been stripped, and my hands can't feel to grip, and my tongue's too numb to step, waiting only for my boot heels to be wondering. I'm ready to go anywhere, I'm ready for it to be unto my own parade. Your dancing spells my way I promise to go under it Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man Play a song for me I'm not sleepy and There ain't no place I'm going to Hey, Mr. Tambourine Bully, 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 bully. Had a tall 
of many Let's not take no chance Let's not be 11-7 Come and learn to dance Wooly Bully Wooly Bully Wooly Bully Wooly Bully Wooly Bully
can't 